And if you fail and you quit, you're done. Like you have to be willing to fail to keep growing. Hello there, it's Mandy Woodard, and this is Courageous Conversations. The show is all about our life journey and the growing and healing we go through. Sometimes it takes great courage to step out of where we are and choose a different path. I started this show because I wanted you to know that you are not alone, no matter where you are in your life journey. And my hope is that you will hear a story that I share or a conversation that I have and you will get something out of it. You will have an aha moment or a realization and you'll know what you need to do because it is my belief that we are all here to help each other grow and become the best version of ourselves and find what our purpose is. So thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. Let's get started. Hello, welcome to episode 38 of Courageous Conversations. It is September 19th, 2023. It's actually my grandmother's 84th birthday today. So happy birthday to her and me and my little one will be going up to take her to lunch and spend the day with her. And you know, it always gets me thinking just how precious life is and it feels so long and so short at the same time. I feel like it was not that long ago. I was spending my summers with my grandma and my grandpa and she was 55 and I knew she was 55 because I would tell, I related it to the speed limit sign. So silly. But my point remains, life flies. And I just, I want to encourage you, you know what, you're listening to this. Let me just give you a little reminder to call your parents or your grandparents or your kids or your sister or your brother, whoever it is that you haven't said hi to in a while. Uh, Go ahead and give them a call and tell them you love them because you guys, life is just going by so fast and we don't want to miss these moments. But let's move on and talk about today's episode. I have a wonderful guest. Her name is Tani. She lives on the other side of the country from me. I met her on Instagram, or I'm pretty sure through an Instagram workshop back a couple years ago now. And we just clicked. We hit it off. We have so much in common and I just adore her. So I was excited to have her come and share her journey through making a living on Instagram in growing a business in that way. I know a lot of people want to do it. A lot of people try, they set out to, but you'll hear from her what it takes and make sure you stick around for the takeaways because we'll, I'll talk a little bit more about some of this stuff too there. But before we jump in, I do want to remind my local peeps, I am teaching Reiki one October 8th. It's a Sunday at my office. Um, If you're interested, shoot me a message and I will get you a link so you can get your ticket. But it's really going to be so much more than just Reiki 1. I like to add some stuff to it. So I'm going to be talking through ways that you can uh, walk yourself through the healing journey. Because I do believe we need a support system. We need energy healers, good therapists, acupuncture, all the things. And then we also need the know-how to be able to heal ourselves. And that's really what I want to do here is empower you to use these tools to go on your own healing journey. So uh, hit me up if you're, if you're interested in that and I will get you the link. I have very limited seats. So be sure to book quickly if you know you want to do that. And then I will do a Reiki circle at the end of October but I'll share more about that as it gets closer. But the next thing I want to tell you about is I finally got my freebie going, which is a Reiki meditation. And all you have to do is go to lionheartcoachingco.com and sign up for that newsletter. I send out a love letter every Friday. It's only sweet sentiments and things to maybe inspire you. And every now and then I'll shoot you an email, maybe talking about a class or something that I'm offering, but pretty much I only like to send out emails that are, uh, in alignment with what I feel is good. And that is 
sending love and ins- inspiration and all the things. There's that. That's number two that I want to tell you about. And then the last thing that I want to tell you about is make sure if you're not in my Facebook group, hop on in there because it's where I want to really get to know you and see where you are in your journey and how I can maybe help you and maybe even talk about some things in there that I don't get to talk about on the podcast. I plan to go live soon. So if you are not there, I'll lo- I'll drop a link in the show notes below. All right, that's all from me for now. If you have any questions, you're welcome to email me at hello at lionheartcoachingco.com. Okay, I didn't realize I was going to give that many announcements. Now, for real, let's jump into this conversation. So this is my conversation with my friend Tawny, and I want to just be fully real and transparent with you. I left the silly beginning in there, the totally unpolished version of our interview, because I worry sometimes, and this has been on my mind a lot lately, that you might hear my podcast or follow me on Instagram or Facebook, wherever it is, and perceive me to have it all together. And I do edit things. I want to be very clear about that. I did stop using filters on my Instagram stories for this very reason, but I definitely edit audio. I edit conversations and I think sometimes it's cool to just hear the real deal. Like this is what happened. This is how it began. I'm definitely not going to do this every time, but in an effort to show you that you don't have to have it all together all the time, you can just start something and fumble your way through. Like Tawny said in the very beginning intro, the line that I pulled is, you got to be willing to fail if you want to grow. Please do not ever think for a second that I hit record on this podcast and immediately had it all together. I have deleted and restarted plenty of episodes, including this one and including my intro here. I think I restarted about four or five times. So, all right, my friend, here is my courageous conversation with my friend, Tawny. So, um, I have difficulty at the beginning in my human design chart. Yeah. I never know how to start these things. Mm-hmm. You would think after this, like I, how many after interviews? This, have them? Yeah. I've, I've done at least 30 interviews probably. I think you just go into it naturally, right? Well, cause I edit the crap out of it. So then it does. <laughs> <laughs> but every single interview starts just like this. Like, okay, so um, you're going to have to bear with me for a second. Cause I don't know how to open this up. <laughs> but I think that's like the perfect, the perfect intro. And like how oh, we to say it. that. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's real. It's human, right? It shows like that you're a real person that you're not perfectly edited. Don't get me started yeah. on perfectionism. Oh, so that's how we can start this, actually. <laughs> okay. What was I going to say? <laughs> <laughs> I don't look very professional right now, do I? But that's okay. I have to. That's what people like. Okay. So, yeah, starting this out, and I'm telling you that it's, I always struggle starting out. And so, Tawny just told me just roll with it because that's you're human. Yep. And what's very interesting, Tawny, is that one of the things you share the most about is perfectionism and yep. getting people out of perfectionism. <laughs> is that because you're a perfectionist? Very much so. Very much mm-hmm. so. Yeah. yeah. Previously, not my strong suit. Um, very strong people pleaser too. This mm. morning, I'm going to pat myself on the back, although I don't know if it seems mean or not. I think it was fair. I'm in line at Starbucks. I go to the same Starbucks every day. All the baristas know me, know my order, right? I'm in line and this old lady walks up and she just like slowly starts inching in. Like the one thing that I've really enjoyed since we had our whole 2020 thing is the fact that we don't stand on top of each other in line anymore. I've never liked that, right? Like I've always left space. I don't want to hear you breathing on my neck, right? Right. So I'm leaving space because it's, it's lovely. I love that. I love having space. This lady walks up and she just goes slowly, slowly, slowly inching in front of me. And then all of a sudden she's in front of me and I'm like, okay, don't be a people pleaser, Tommy. Don't be a people pleaser. Like I've been waiting in line. There's lots of people in line. I'm like, hi. I'm like, we're all in line here. There's like a line behind me. 
she turns around she's like I was here before you I was like no you weren't and then she goes oh no maybe not you but them I'm like okay like I want to be nice and all but like she just straight up cut me people are so comical (sighs) and she's like technically dumb and like not look back and like inch her way in and I feel like you know older version of me and myself would have just let it go I would have been afraid to say something and I I mean at the end of the day it was like two extra seconds right that she was in front of me but it was just rude and yeah that perfectionism people pleaser in me is like found her ground finally and I'm like I'm so proud of myself that is great (laughs) yeah because that is that is so rude (laughs) it was and then she goes I say that and I don't know who was behind me I wasn't tracking the people behind me but I knew there were and then she goes I'm here four times a day I know how it goes and I'm like okay but what does that have to do with anything (laughs) but yeah that working on that people pleaser and perfectionism piece which my page like how I met you and how we connected has literally like been such a life changer for me it's crazy yeah so I met you when you first started your page yeah why don't you tell us too a little bit about what you do and you're in the air so Tawny welcome first of all (laughs) I didn't say that Tawny lives in Arizona Mm -hmm. so we're three hour time difference but we met on Instagram yep. in 2020 or 21, one of those years. I want to say it was the beginning of 21 because 20, okay. I had like launched my first Instagram page. I'd never had Instagram before and I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. Like I was a lost bird and I got a few posts up in like December. So it had to have been earlier that year before I changed like my original plan of what I had started and then started going into the perfectionism piece of things. Because initially I wanted to help moms simplify their life, right? And I'm really big on systems and eliminating redundancies and like making your life easier. I love like meal services. When I worked in the corporate world, I always had like clothing rental. I'd just get it shipped to me and I had new outfits every week and just anything to like simplify life. I hate shopping. I hate wearing the same outfit a hundred times. So, you know, um, unless it's now I live in my Lulu's and I wear those about a hundred times over, but you know, what can we do? So yeah, I think we met probably early in 2021 on Instagram. And I've yeah, because I was doing Shalene Johnson's thing. And that's when probably when you, oh, yes. I don't know if we were in a Facebook group together or if we found each other through a hashtag, but we were both doing that. Oh, maybe it was actually on the zoom call that they were having. Oh, that could be it. Yeah, I think we connected on the Zoom call and then we followed each other and then just clicked because we realized we had so much in common. So you started a page and with the intention to make money from Instagram. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And you started in 2021. Now it's 2023. And I would say just real quick, have you had success with that? Yes. Yes. But more so by word of mouth referral. So I started my page with the intention of helping moms, changed it to perfectionism, right? And then I got my first client. So I started doing like consulting work, helping people in their business specifically. And I got my first client. And then I had kind of like this like dry spell. Like I've had some makeup sales because I'm a rep for Saint. So I had some makeup sales, but like nothing big in it. And then I just kind of had this spell where like, nothing was really happening, but I was really trying to force things like trying to make it happen and trying and trying. And I hit a point where I just got like defeated because, you know, everybody does, right. We're all, all in 150%. We're trying, we're showing up, we're doing all the things, all the experts say you should do. And my page was growing, which was great, but I just wasn't getting leads, but I was also very afraid of like selling myself, like having something to offer to people And it just didn't come naturally. I don't like to be sold to myself. Like I like that natural connection of just how things develop and people have interest. And then I had an old friend from college reach out to me and she's like, what are you doing? And she's like looking at my page and you're doing consulting. Like I just started my business. I'm not even a year in yet. Like, can we work together? Like, talk to me about this. So I started talking to her and then from her, I've had so many word of mouth referrals. And so I've been helping her in her business And her revenue has just exploded. And then I couldn't stand her social media page. 
it was just driving me crazy because I'm perfectionist, very OCD. I want it to be very aesthetically pleasing, right? Yeah. Organized. And it was just driving me bonkers at the time. So I'm like, could I just like get my hands on your socials for like a short period of time? Like, can I just like try it? I don't like the way that it's looking. And she's a med spa owner, right? So like everything is about aesthetics and like how things appear and look. And her page just imploded. Like we're over 2000 followers now. And she had like a hundred something when she started about a year ago with me. And then I just started getting word of mouth referrals on socials. And then she started hiring people. So I took over their page. And so it just kind of kept growing over time. So it's been really cool. But yeah, I definitely think as far as like just getting people on Instagram alone, there there is money there to be made, but like more so in the word of mouth, building relationship, people seeing you showing up, getting to know who you are, I think is such a game changer there versus just like coming to your landing page and buying something, you know? Yeah. Well, I agree so much with you in what you're saying. And this past summer, I was doing a coaching course where I hired a coach. And that's one of the things that I realized through this 12 week program. And with my little pod that I was in is like, you know, I've been working social media since 2017. In 2017, I put my face in my stories, Mm -hmm. literally shaking because I'm like, what do I even say? I don't even think I said anything that made sense, but that's when I started making an effort and it was for, I wanted to start a blog. Then I didn't start a blog. Then I started the Amanda Hoyle show on YouTube, which was short lived. And then I started selling a network marketing product, which did really well for the time. And there was a lot of social media involved in there. And then I switched to coaching Well, I had been coaching alongside the network marketing thing the whole time, but it's like through this whole last, what is it? Six years. I have been like, what the heck, dude? I feel like my page should not look like it does. But when I'm in person with people, I'm booked. I mean, I'm booked out. So it's, we get so caught up on the follower count and the sales from online sales. And man, I do want to tap into that. And I'm going to, really put some effort here (laughs) coming. Like I am putting the effort in and I'm not going to have a limiting belief around that because I see the success people have, but in person, word of mouth, you cannot replace, you cannot replace that. I mean, that's how my coaching business has grown over the last year and a half is from word of mouth, local people. So And I do have people from all over. Of course, I've connected with you. I have people in other countries that follow and share the podcast and things like that. So that's really awesome. But yeah, as far as lead generation and getting sales, I also, I think, I don't know, you have to be really clear about what you're selling and what you're offering or people aren't going to know what to click. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And that's me. That's looking back. I'm like, okay, so I had this offer, this coaching offer, which I did make a sale on. And I loved the girl that I worked with and it was a great experience. And then she turned around and made her first $4,000 sale, like one, like her first big sale. And it was the coolest thing for me to know, like how much I helped her and gave her the confidence of that. But like, I don't even know, like I asked her, like, what did I do that made you like, want to work with me. She's like, I don't know. I just followed your page and I liked you. Like it just fit. Right. And so it's like, I wasn't very clear in my messaging, but it's because of that, like block that fear of like selling yourself. But now I'm at such a different place where it's like, no, like I know the value that I can add to you and add to your business. And so I feel more comfortable and confident in it. But what I've also learned along the way, and you've probably seen in your coaching too, is like, I want to work with people who are really committed to themselves or really committed to their business. So I get to like handpick, cherry pick my clients. So I'm not interested in running a Facebook ad or an Instagram ad that's going to shoot out to the whole universe because I want to know who I'm working with and who, you know, that they're committed to their business and to themselves because my success is only as good as their commitment to themselves. Yeah. You know, if you have a client who wants change, but isn't committed to change, 
they're not going to be as successful. And that sounds negative or, you know, unfortunate to say, but it's just the truth. You have to be committed to yourself and your business to have that success. Yeah, so, for sure. Big difference when you've got someone who's really engaged, who really cares, who really wants to change or grow or whatever it may be. That's where I'm at now. It's like my page is kind of just on like maintenance. It's like I'm running, I'm showing up in stories, but I'm not worried about posting every day and like growing to this huge number. I've like let the numbers thing go, which Mm -hmm. that's such a huge piece for me to let go because you want it to look not, not even like vanity numbers, but like you want to look legit and you want to show growth and all of those things too. But when you have a smaller network and you're finding who you want to work with and who excites you to work with, I think it's so much more fulfilling than just working with anybody and everybody. It's, it's truly empowering to be able to pick the people that you work with. And I work mostly with female owned businesses, female entrepreneurs. So it's really fun and really exciting for sure. Well, and I love that too, that you said that about letting go of the numbers, because that is the biggest thing when we want things, we have to detach from that. We have to completely detach from that. And I made that decision just, I would say intuitively last year, but then it was funny. It was like the main topic of conversation in this 12 week program I just did is detaching from the outcome, you know, just get what excites you, what makes you happy. You just need to do that and stop worrying about the number of clients or the amount that's going to fall into your bank account or whatever it is. So last year when I started my coaching in, I was doing in-person sessions. I literally told my husband, like, we are not calculating this. We are not going to figure out how much as long as I can pay the rent and I will, right. I, I could, I knew I would, if I had one client a day, then I was fine. Right. And so I never looked at the numbers. And I think that's probably the best thing that, that I could have do. ever done. Now this year, I do look at the numbers because I was needing to make some bigger decisions and bigger purchases. And I had to make sure it was going to make sense, but Anyways, let's switch gears a little bit because I want to know what made you want to start an Instagram page in the first place? Yeah, definitely. Great question. So Shaleen Johnson, way back in the day, I found her in 2015 and I did her like OG, like push journal. She did like a, I want to test drive this concept idea. Um, And I started listening to her podcast and just really gravitated towards her. She's like, I feel like an older version of myself. Like I just love her. Right. And so I did this test run of her now huge push journal that is like massive and everybody, you know, within that MIA group marketing impact Academy and whatnot is using. And she started talking about just how you could really free yourself and your life by having your own business. And I had always had like that inkling, like I had my own photography business when I turned 18 And I had some different like contract work that I did. And I just loved that power of like being in control of my day to day. And my struggle in my photography business was like, I didn't want to be working when everybody else wasn't working all the time. That was like the biggest thing. Like, I don't want to be working on Saturdays and Sundays every week. Have we talked about this? Did I know? I don't know if I knew you were a photographer. I don't know if we have, but you do photography. I know that. I had a photography business for 15 years and I'm telling you the amount of events I missed because of what you just said is the biggest reason I got out of it. Anyways, proceed. Especially like going and having a family and whatnot. But yeah, Mm -hmm. so I'd always had that itch and that inkling and she came out with Marketing Impact Academy and the price tag at that point in my life was just like too much for me to bite off. I just wasn't comfortable. Although like, you know, you always can have what you want. You just have to want it more. You just have to say yes, honestly, because then it finds a way to you. Right, right. (laughs) Yeah. So I had always wanted to. And then there's this couple, um, Hey Sweet Pea. It's Elise and Scott, I believe his name is. And they bought a trailer, started their online business, and we're traveling the US. And she's just like the best storyteller. Like her posts are just amazing. I was like, oh my God, like I would love to do that. I would absolutely love to do that. And of course, I just spent like, $65,000 $65,000 to get, you know, my bachelor's degree and go into healthcare. And, you know, so it wasn't quite like the right idea at the time, even though I was like obsessed with it. 
And so, you know, you go about your merry way and, you know, we bought our house or well, we bought our second house. I bought my first house when I was 21 and ended up selling that. And then my husband and I bought a house together and get in this house. And it's like everything you dreamed of, right? Like I've got the four bedrooms and the office and it's in the white picket fence neighborhood with the green grass and all the things. It's like everything you you're told that you're supposed to want. And I'm like, holy crap, all I do is work to pay this mortgage. And like, cool, I have two new vehicles in the driveway, but all I'm doing is working to pay for everything. Like, where's the joy in this? It's like, I love my life, but also like, it's just not, it's just not what I thought it would be. I thought there would be more freedom and more time and more balance. And then I have my daughter and I'm like, I'm missing out on so much time with her. Like, I just don't like this. Like, this is not what I dreamed about. And I never really thought that I wanted to be a stay at home mom necessarily, but I was working so many hours, like so many hours that I was just exhausted by the time that I came home. And then he was working opposite of me. So we didn't have to put her in daycare. And so then we didn't get a bunch of time together. And it was like, okay, this is like not working. And my brother and sister-in-law bought a trailer, sold their house and started traveling. And I'm like, all right, they did it. Like we can do this. Let's talk about this. Right. And I'd already been obsessing over it. And he was like, let's do it. And I was like, really? Like, you're you're down for this crazy idea? Let's do it. He's like, yeah. So we buy a truck, buy a trailer. We're like, ready to go. We've got everything prepared, all the photos taken, all the things in order. I'm like getting ready to leave my corporate job. At this point, I'm a corporate director. I'm overseeing like half of Arizona for a huge healthcare system for discharge planning. And I'm like, all right, let's do it. Well, lovely 2020 comes, right? Knocking on our door. And the day we put our house on the market, they declared a state of emergency. Wow. Now we're like, crap, what do we do? We we have no idea what's going to happen with this whole thing. And I'm like, let's just do it. Let's just do it. And everybody's looking at us like we're crazy, right? And everybody's keeping their distance from each other and staying home and all the things like it's March. So we get like buyers coming through and still looking and people are now like in the I need to get into a place so mm. we're like okay we're gonna sell we're gonna be okay so we sell our house and we go and we head up and we are living in the mountains in our trailer everywhere locked down we couldn't get into parks we had one park that we had already made a reservation for that we had for like two months right and we're up there and there's nowhere to go. You couldn't even dry camp in the woods. They closed all the forest down because they didn't want people, you know, out there doing whatever or starting a fire. And so we're like, where are we going to go? Like, what is going to happen? It's so, so crazy. And I'm like, all right, now what do I do? Because everybody went remote. So I'm already working remote. Do I like keep my job? Like what's going to happen? And we're just like, we're not sure. So it's like jump or like, don't jump. Like what's the what's the right answer there? And my husband at the time had been injured. He's a massage therapist. And so he had been injured. He couldn't keep doing massage. And obviously it wasn't the time to be doing massage either. So we kind of just held down the fort with where we were at and I kept working, but I was remote. So that was nice. And then it was like, okay, like, do I want to keep doing this or do I want to like take the leap of faith and go all out? And so I ended up quitting. I was like no longer working for them. And decided I had to go all in on myself. And that was a huge leap. Huge. I'd imagine. Yeah. Yeah. It was crazy. It was like, all right, you can take this position. Like, what do you want to do? And I'm like, "Mm, I think I just want to go all in on myself. Like I'm here. I got rid of the huge mortgage. I still had a truck payment and a trailer payment, but much more affordable in the scheme of things. Right downsized greatly got rid of so much stuff I just had a storage unit with my couch in it because I wasn't letting my couch go it's like my sacred couch that I dreamed of the random things you obsess over right right so <laughs> I've got this storage unit and I'm like whatever we'll come back and get it or we'll come back and sell it we're gonna go travel for a few years where while our little one is little still and ended up being like our our um heater blew up it just imploded and we're in the forest and it's cold at night And so I end up going back, trying to get parts, trying to get it fixed. It's in the shop for months. Like everything's on delay. And so we're like, okay, we better like buy a house. I kind of got a little out of order there. We bought a house before I left the corporate world, but 
we ended up buying a house up in the mountains now. So we're like, let's get out of the city. Like we love being up in the mountains. Let's get out of the city. And we've been up here for a few years now. And I just slowly started working on my business. Like I went all in to start, um, but like slowly building it up. And then that's kind of where that like change came for me is just like, all right, now, now I have to do this. Like yeah. world, I've got to do this. But there was like, there was an identity crisis within that and a real like dark night of the soul because you know, you attach so much to it when you've worked so hard and spent so much money to get a degree. And then you've worked from the front line up to a director position. There's so much of you that you've made this a a part of your identity. And so now it's like starting over. So while I was like really excited and really into it, it was also this like breaking up with like a part of myself. And a lot of people around me obviously couldn't understand like why I would do this. And, you know, I had this, this great job and why would you leave that? And, you know, it's like six figures, isn't everything like that's this number that we like monetize and want to work towards. And then you get there and you're like, it's really no different. Like I'm still spending just as much money, even though I'm making more, like you kind of just keep inching up with how much you're spending. So it wasn't this huge gap. Um, And so it was like, all right, like this isn't here. So Shaleen um, did a special because so many people had been laid off or were trying to get their businesses started or whatever it may be. She decided with 2020, she was going to do a special for Marketing Impact Academy. And so she ran that and then her smart success program at a discounted price. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. Like, I'm finally going to jump. I'm finally going to take the leap. And that was for me is kind of like watching her build and grow her businesses over almost... 10 years now, all of these different things and changing courses. She was like a fitness instructor, you know, and now she does all this business stuff. Watching her do that, I was like, I know it's possible. I know I can do this. And like Elise from Hey Sweet Pea, like same thing. And just like watching them do that, I was like, I'm going to do this. Like, I'm really going to do this. And so I think it was like a big unraveling and unwinding And working through, you know, like past trauma and things I'd never dealt with and working on my perfectionism that like really kind of got me going. But I think like getting away from the city and out of that go, go, go rat race comparison, getting out of that was so, so helpful to me. Um, But it was also a huge, huge shift. And so that brought me into my business. And like I said, I started with that idea of helping moms And I just didn't get any leverage off of it. So I stepped into the perfectionism piece. And then that's when I really started connecting with people. And I feel like there was such a big push and conversation about mental health because so many of us were, you know, locked at home alone or with just our family. And so we like started really having more of a mental health conversation than I think, at least in the U.S., than we have in the past And so I started connecting with other like-minded people who are wanting to start their business and share and talk about mental health and that perfectionism. It just like, it caught people's attention because I mean, it's really, it's almost ingrained in us, Mm -hmm. but I love that space. And I loved working with my one client and it was like, I don't want to do coaching alone. Like I wanted to bring in that corporate knowledge and information that I had, like, I really love helping people grow their business. So the coaching end of it was nice for me, but I just wanted to bring more to the table in a different way. I didn't want to focus specifically on like the mental health perfectionism end of things. And that's what got me into actually consulting in small businesses and like helping them to build a product and sell a product, um, more of a service driven product than a physical product. I don't necessarily do physical products. I'll talk to people about it, but I usually don't take on those clients specifically. You know, what's interesting, I think too, is what you're talking about when you started, when you, so you left your job and then you start your Instagram, you had this moment of like, quiet where it wasn't doing anything. And maybe you even stopped posting for a little bit, I think. Right. And um, you said something about having this dark night of the soul, yeah. but also realizing some traumas. It's it, to me, is it just that when you're in that corporate rat race, for lack of a better word, 
You don't notice these things, but it's like all of a sudden everything's quiet and you're like, well, what is it that I'm struggling with? Is it, you know, when you're trying to build a business, you have to face this stuff. You have to face the things that are holding you back. And that really does come from past traumas and limiting beliefs and the idea that everything has to be just right and perfect. And I'm, I'm just, I don't, I don't know if I even have a question in that, or if it's just a statement that, yeah, this is why entrepreneurs have to do so much work because there is a level of self-awareness that you have to have if you want to grow your business. You're just not going to grow if you don't have that self-awareness. Yeah. We have to tap into what those limiting beliefs are for you. Mm -hmm. You know, I've always been obsessed with personal development, like probably since I was like 14 or 15. Um, But all of my prior to this switch development was focused on growth, improvement, emotional intelligence. And those are all great things to focus on. But if you can't see where those limiting beliefs stand, then you're kind of always morphing and shape-shifting to be what somebody else needs you to be. So in the corporate world, nobody said to me, well, you need to dress this way, look this way, act this way. But there's a standard presence that people hold, right? So blonde hair and 26 working in the corporate world, 27, whatever I was at that point, you know, it doesn't, you're kind of like the dingy blonde. You're the young one who somehow made it, you know, and people question you. And so I'm like dyeing my hair brown and I'm dressing in Calvin Klein, like business dresses and suits. And you know what I mean? Like, not that I don't like those things. Um, but like, I'm a blonde by nature. I love my blonde in my hair. I love my bleach, you know, like it's like I couldn't show up as my true self because that's not how to gain respect in that world. And so it's it's self-limiting because you're morphing to be whatever the situation around you wants you to be. You know, mm-hmm. your neighbor gets a new Tesla or gets a new fancy car. It's like, oh, should I be driving like a nicer car? Like I'm totally happy with my Dodge Dart over here that's brand new. <laughs> but like all my neighbors have Teslas, right? You know, yeah. it's just you're constantly trying to keep up, keep up, keep up. And it's like, hold on. Like, this isn't me. This is what makes me happy and brings me joy. But Mm -hmm. like, I don't want to fall behind either. You know what I mean? And now I live in like a small town on top of a mountain. And it's like, nobody cares what you drive. Like if anything, if you're driving a Tesla, they know you're not from here because you don't fit in. Right? (laughs) It's just a totally different atmosphere. But when you unwind and unweave, from that go, 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 I think, yeah, it, it totally frees you up and it totally changes your mindset and what you look at. And that's when you start to dive into that personal development and see in your business, you know, like if you're not willing to take risks, if you're always going to live this uptight, like protected, guarded way, you're probably not going to be as successful because being an entrepreneur and having your own business is taking risk. I mean, that's just what it is. Yeah. And you're going to fail. And if you fail and you quit, you're done. Like you have to be willing to fail to keep growing and For to keep sure. forward, you know? Well, and so my question, I guess, would be what about the people who do work in the corporate world, but maybe they don't want to leave. They like their job. They don't want to own a business because, you know, not everybody wants to own a business, right. but it's a matter of how do you keep your integrity? How do you keep true to yourself and not dye your hair the color that you feel like you have to. And I'm sure that's more of a female thing. Right. Unless a gray haired guy is feeling like he's got to dye right. his hair too, you know, or driving that car that keeping up with the Joneses mentality. It's about coming home to yourself. Right. And, and saying, I have to stay true to myself, but I would imagine that that's where that societal conditioning comes in. Big time. Big time. Yeah. So what do you, what do you say to those people who are still in the corporate world? I mean, I think they just have to lean into that inner child and what really brought them joy and happiness when they were younger, because I think a lot of that gets pushed out, right? Like it just doesn't get prioritized. So Mm. whatever it is that you love, and you know, that brings you joy and passion. I feel like you have to lean into that because a lot of people come to me and say like, how do you go without benefits? How do you go without a 401k? How do you? And I'm like, literally, it's the easiest thing. Like we've been scammed to believe that we have to work for a large corporation to have benefits, to have a retirement. 
I have, yeah. I have a Roth IRA and I have a normal IRA, right? Like you can still have a retirement. Okay. You don't get a company match, whatever. You can charge more for your services and put more money in your savings account. You know what I mean? Like you can have health insurance. There are so many options, so many different things that you can do to have that same lifestyle. If that's what you want and need in that security, like you don't have to work for a large corporation to have that. But I think I kind yeah. of digress there, but like, I think you have to, you have to lean into what makes you happy and brings you joy because some people aren't ready to make the jump or like you said, have absolutely no desire, but then are you living that repetitive cycle of go to work, come home, go to work, come home. Oh, I've got the weekend, like living for the weekends. Well, if you're living for the weekends, you better be making a heck of a good weekend out of those weekends. Right. Like like off-roading or if you like, I don't know whatever you like to do, going hiking, like get out and do that because it's way too easy just to sit at home and just to live that repeat button over and over and over again. And then people wonder why they're depressed and anxious and feel, you know, disconnected from the world. And it's like, well, we as a society have created that, like we have created this rat race cycle and we're not in tune and in touch with nature, like go out bare feet, walk around in your grass, like, you know, get connected again, because that's hard to do when you live in a place that is hundred percent concrete and you've got little tiny patches of grass, you know, like it's so hard to do, but you don't realize it. There's a reason why your mood changes when you go up a mountain or out to the ocean mm-hmm. the reason is, is because, yeah. you know, historically we were animals. I mean, we don't treat ourselves like animals anymore, but we are mammals. We are meant to be in nature. We are meant to be in touch with ourselves. And when we just completely disconnect and become a robot in the system, it's, it's limiting. Yeah. So basically, basically, if you still work in the corporate world, you better make sure you're getting your feet in the dirt as much as you possibly can. Right. Or whatever brings joy, do your art. If you love art. Yeah. Or, you know, whatever it may be. If you're a singer, sing, you know, do something <laughs> that brings you happy because you fall out of that. You just put it to the side and you're like, Hey, I don't have time for this. I got to work. And when I'm not working, I'm exhausted. And you know what I mean? It's just, so you got to assess your life. That's where that life assessment comes in. It's, it's yep. like, what's your quality of life? Yep. And what are you, where do you need to do a little bit more? I love talking about on a scale of one to 10 and then going through each of the categories because yeah. your emotional well being is a zero. Then we got to focus on that. Yep. If your spiritual life is a zero. We got to focus on that. What do you need to get that up there and how can you make it happen? Because it's just too important to, to just ignore it. You can't just ignore it or you're going to end up coming into that space of, yeah, I'm super depressed yep. and yeah, you got to find that balance for sure. So what a major transformation for you though, to go from corporate life, everything goes chaotic and you sell your house <laughs> Yeah. So now living in the mountains and having this online business. And when did your husband get to go back to work? Because I'd imagine that was probably the most nerve wracking part is that he wasn't working and you also were trying to not work. Yeah. Yeah. So luckily we had a huge chunk of money in savings from selling our house. So that was nice. That really gave us some breathing room. We had a huge chunk of money in savings. So we didn't have to stress about that. Um, But actually what shifted, so we had always planned on him being home with the babies. That was kind of always our goal. We knew we wanted to have kids and we didn't want to put them in daycare. And I was go, go, go in my career. And it's just what worked for us. And he was going to do stuff kind of like part-time on the side, whatever. He had a personal training business and then he was doing massage therapy. And so when we got up here, the one thing that he hadn't tapped into was football. He is a diehard football fan but like not even fan like next level so he actually got into officiating and so he officiates football for all of our local schools and that's such a huge passion project for him like I've been pushing him forever like you need to start your own you know like football he worked for a statistics company who does statistics for like ESPN and all the big companies and whatever that talk about sports. But I'm like, you need to start your own like page business, like data analysis, whatever. 
And so that was finally the time for like him to get into that. So he actually dove into that the same year that we were starting our business and I was getting into consulting. So that was really cool for him, but also really nice for us because we never wanted our little ones to be in daycare. That was always our goal. So we kept grounded in that while also like pursuing passions at the same time. So did he get success? Did he find success on Instagram? He he's not on Instagram. Not at all. So did he do a page though for, I tell my husband this all the time. Cause you want to talk about a next level fan. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's serious. Football yeah. season is very taken very seriously in my household. And I tell Richie all the time, you got to start a podcast or something. You gotta do something with it. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. He does like officiating real time at games. Um, but no, he didn't have any interest in the whole page thing, which I mean, I get, he's not like a huge social media person. Right. Neither is Richie, which yeah. is why he's like, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing any of that. I'm and I'm like, like there dude, like people are calling you all the time over like fantasy trades and asking for your advice. Like yeah. Yeah. he drives me, I'm like, make money. I have that entrepreneur brain. Right. Not that he doesn't, he has a very brilliant mind, but I'm very much like, okay, how can you make money from this? Right. Right. He's like, yeah. it's just fun. I'm like, oh, people do that. They just have fun and don't make things. Fun. Because, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. No, Everything I've fun. ever loved, I've turned into a business. So. Right. Right. That's the entrepreneurial heart. Yeah. No, yes. His goal, he wants to get to like the college, the NFL level. He's in his third year right now and he's getting tons of varsity games. Like it's so, so cool to see his growth. Um, I mean, he got varsity games really early because you're not even supposed to get them until your third year. But that's been really cool for him because he's just been able to dive into that. And, you know, it works so great and it makes him happy and brings him so much joy. So the beauty of building our business online with me doing consulting and socials and everything is once he gets to that point, it's like if we want to just pack up and go like we can pack up and go to college football games or, you know, whatever we need to do. It just, it gives you so much freedom, which Very is really, cool. really nice. And that's, I mean, that's the ultimate goal is just to, if we need to go to California for a football game, like take the kids and go, you know? Pick yeah. Them. I mean, that's, I see to me, that is the ultimate goal, goal is to be able to have that freedom and flexibility to do what you want when you want. And you've grown your page, not posting your kids. You only talk about Yep. What do you talk about right now? It's it's not still perfectionism. What is it that you're talking about now? Right now, it's kind of just been like, I haven't been posting as much. Um, but when I do, it's kind of more like trying to inspire people is kind of my focus of content versus more historically, it was like a mixture of like educational and personal stories and whatnot. But I'm trying to be more inspirational of like, there is a life outside of the corporate world. If you want it, you can make it happen. Um, you know, I think my most recent one was just like an audio clip and me just being like outside hiking. And it was like, you know, you're living the life or you're living one part of your life that you once dreamed of. And so like, remember that, look back, like be appreciative of that, no matter where you are, mm -hmm. whether you got job promotion in the corporate world, like that was once a dream and now you're living it. Or if you moved out of the city and you know, you're living in the mountains and doing a whole different thing. So yeah. It's, uh, it's crazy. But yeah, for the most part, I'm pretty consistent on stories. I try to be at least and just stay in touch with like my current following. And then I spit out a reel here or there. I haven't really posted a like stagnant post or a carousel in a hot minute. Um, but I've been busy doing other people's socials. So it's like one of those things. It's always easier to show up for somebody else than yourself. Right. <laughs> so everybody I else mean, yeah. Speak, right. And yeah. I'll show up on stories, but it's something that it's been a shift for me where I'm like finally not obsessing over those numbers. And, yeah. you know, like you're taught like, oh, you need to follow pages that are within your niche and interact with those pages and whatever. And I'm, I'm finally just like showing up for me. I'm following whoever I want, doing whatever I want, interacting with whoever I want, however I want. And it has been my least forced and most expansive season I was like okay like you know I'm just gonna take it easy whatever whatever happens happens like I'm good and then it's just like boom like let's keep going let's do this let's do that I'm getting more inquiries than I've ever gotten I've turned people away because I literally don't have the capacity I hired my first independent contractor to help me because I'm so busy that I'm like I literally can't keep up 
I've got to create more space for my kids because that's more important to me than anything, you know? So it's like, it's crazy. It's that's so crazy. pretty incredible though. I was just looking because I was trying to remember some of the other people that we were doing that with that have grown exponentially, but I think I might've, I can't remember their handles, but I do remember there are some other people that have really done some amazing things. Yeah. So shout out to Shaleen for teaching all these people how to do Instagram so well. And yeah. I'm so happy that it's worked out for you the way that it has, that you've been able to earn an income when right. you go, you go from one thing to the next. I mean, I just think that's such an incredible story of growth for people to be able to hear that and know that it's possible. And I do have clients that try to grow on Instagram or grow an online business. And it's always about alignment to me. And it's like, are you operating in alignment? Because you can be checking off all the boxes. Right. But are you in alignment with yourself? And do you feel that that's when the shift happened? Because for you, you you came more into alignment. Yeah. Yep. I think you when you stop forcing, that's what it was for me. I stopped forcing it. I was just like, all right, like it's, it's not worth the energy to keep forcing it right now. I actually took a really big, big break from Instagram specifically last August, I want to say it was. And I was like, I'm just going to focus on my health. My thyroid was kind of sluggish and my energy just wasn't there. And I'm like, I'm just going to focus on me. I'm going to get really in tune with my yoga practice and I'm just going to stop trying to force it. Cause I just can't anymore. You know, like you get to that point where you feel kind of defeated in it. And then of course it's like when I don't care at all and I'm like finally agreeable to this, it's like, okay, what about this? What about this? I had somebody like, Hey, would you be interested in a partnership in my business? Like, here's what it is. And here's this and that. And I'm like, no, nope. <laughs> but like, thank you. <laughs> well, that just shows how amazing you are. I would say. Oh, well, thank you. Oh, I do good. think you have a lot of amazing things to offer as far as helping businesses and your expertise and your social media knowledge is, I mean, you really are a total package. So (laughs) I can totally see why you're so busy and successful at this point. Okay. So let's wrap this up. Now I would say I have my last thing that I love to ask that I sometimes forget to ask, but it is my favorite (laughs) thing. My favorite thing to ask is what is your big golden advice that you would give someone who was where you were? Mm -hmm. Allow yourself to go through it. Mm. That's really hard. You know, the force and the flow comes after you have the vision and the idea. But before that vision comes to you and you are like ready to start working in your business. Like, you know, you want to have a business, but you don't know what you want yet. You have to go through that dark night of the soul moment. And I think so many of us reject that going into that darkness, that pain, those struggles, because those are the things that help us. Those are the things that create us in our business and help us help other people. We're not just coming up with these new, you know, never been done before, never been seen before things. It's our personal story, our personal experiences that take us to where we're headed and the direction we're going in. So if you won't allow yourself to feel and be in the pain and the grief of that identity breakup of your, you know, corporate role or whatever it may be, you know, I I just don't think you're going to get as far if you don't allow yourself to feel those feelings and have that experience. It's not comfortable, you know, and you don't want to go around talking to people about it. At least most people don't. Right. So like, you're not like, Oh, I'm just having this identity crisis right now. Like nobody's going around saying that, but if you allow yourself to go into that, like I could have very easily just hopped back into the corporate world. Right. Like I still had my degree, my experience, my resume, but it would have just me to the same point. So I feel like you have to really allow yourself to be in that and go down that hole. My favorite book of all time, as far as like personal development and growth is how to do the work by Dr. Michaela, the holistic Mm -hmm. psychologist. She's amazing. So, so amazing. And that book was like, so eye opening for me. And 
just really getting into it, feeling it, acknowledging it. You know, we're a generation of breaking those generational patterns. I think we're a huge force, not that our parents didn't, but I think we have so much technology and knowledge in our hands that it is a lot different from, you know, you didn't have a computer 40 years ago to access these things. So I think we're just a huge generation of change. Um, but we, we can't stifle that change. We can't stop it from happening. We have to really feel the feels and find what we can bring to others and gift to others from that pain. I love that so much. I actually, I'm so I talked a lot about collective consciousness with my last guest, Suzanne, and uh, her episode hasn't aired yet as of the moment we're recording this, but you, what you just said, I literally wrote this whole thing like a week ago about leaning in to your feelings. Of course, I haven't put it anywhere. I I haven't published it or anything, but I, I actually wrote it for one of my clients, like this call to their heart to stop avoiding those hard feelings. Stop running from it because the only way out is through. You have to feel your way through it or you are, you're going to stay stuck in this cycle and, and making those same choices and feeling that same way. It's like, you got to choose to lean in and it's really hard because it's uncomfortable, but the worst of it, the worst of the emotions is only going to last about 90 seconds. And that's, that's a scientific fact from what I've been told. Right. That the worst of it lasts for 90 seconds. And then after that, it's yeah. more of like that residual. You just got to process it. You got to get good people to talk to and hire a life coach, go to a therapist or have a good friend, somebody that's going to help you through it. But I do love the holistic psychologist. And actually I was thinking she was one of the ones that's like, I remember there was somebody that started a page along that, but maybe it was, I don't think it was her, but um, I know Beth has exploded. Who is she, it? Mary Beth. She was around the same time as us. I'm trying to think of what her handle is. Um, she's a psychologist, I believe, off the top of my head. I'm like trying to think here. I'm like trying to look her up on Instagram right now. Um, your journey through her page. Mm. I don't know if you follow her or not, but um, her page has really exploded and done well. She's the relatable therapist. I love her page. But yeah, oh. I really have to, you really have to lean into it. And it's just hard. That's not how we were raised either. It was like, oh, no. you fell? Like, get up. You're okay. Like, mm-hmm. oh, you're sad? Okay, let's go do something else. You know what I mean? So like, it's not normal for right. us. You know, right. Those where a lot of us are now probably raising our kids. Like, oh, you're feeling sad? Let's talk about this. Like, how does yeah. it feel? Where do you feel it? Like, what can we do to work through it together? You know, it's, it's foreign to us. So I acknowledge for anybody who's feeling that and rejecting that, that like, that's basically ingrained in us. That's how our brains are hardwired. So it's not a comfortable process, you know? Right. And I love too, that you said that we are a generation of change because I would agree with that 100%. I mean, growing up for sure, my mom did not know the things that I know as a mom and I can't fault her for that 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 information wasn't out and exactly. readily available like it is now so right. for sure our kids are going to be raised totally different than how we were and talking about the things that come up instead of avoiding them but um what a powerful conversation to have and to realize that and i'm just grateful you came and shared all this i'm so glad that our timing could work <laughs> out So that we could, we could hear your experience. And I mean, it's, it's a big one. There's a lot of people that want to leave their job, whether it's corporate or in healthcare or whatever it might be. And that fear of taking that next step, because there's not something there that's going to catch you. Like that leap is scary, but you are a perfect example for what happens in perfect. How ironic that I would use that word. (laughs) Right. But you no. are an amazing example of what can happen when you let go and just let the universe catch you because everything works out. Right. Well, and you can't, 
you know, you can't limit yourself, like start building it while you're there. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, it's going to take some extra time, but if that's the lifestyle you want, like do it, like take a part-time job, like cut back on your hours, like do whatever it takes to get your foot into that space and keep building up to it. You know, like jumping cold Turkey probably isn't right for everybody. And we were just in a place where we had made some money off of selling our house. So it made it easier at that point, but you know, it's, it's possible. For sure. Well, and two, from a human design perspective, because I wasn't even thinking about um, I just, one of one of my clients just popped in my head when you said that. But if you have if I know, you know, your human design, but if somebody is a fourth line in their profile, they have to have something that's before they can leave the other. Like they yeah. have to have another home lined up before they can sell their one. They have to have another job lined up before they can leave the other. And that's just what's correct for them. So right. it is it is totally different for everybody. I'm a total like, let's just jump and we'll figure it out. Right, right. Yeah, see, and that for me was like, oh, like, I don't know if I can do it. And then my- Do you know what like, your profile lines are? Not off the top of my head. I'm a generator. But I, I can't remember. I'm like a six two split. I do think I remember you being that. But <laughs> thank you so much for talking to me yeah. and coming on the podcast. I'm really grateful for you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. All right. I hope you enjoyed that conversation and you got something out of it. I want to share with you my takeaways. But just know, I would love to hear what you got out of this episode. So even if you just message me on Instagram, or maybe you can even, I think on Spotify, if you listen on Spotify, it gives you a little Q&A at the end of it. I would love to hear what you took away from this episode, though. So all right, let's jump into what I got. One, stand your ground, people pleaser. (laughs) How many times have you been out in public and someone has tried to cut in front of you or do something and instead of saying, hey, dude, that wasn't cool, you just are like, it's fine. I'm fine. Everything's fine. I know that phrase. Oh, my gosh. It makes me cringe. I don't like it. If everything's not fine, do not say it's fine. I'm not for that saying. And I'm going to encourage you to stand in your power and say, excuse me, I was here first. It's okay to do that. It really is. All right, number two, forcing things. It never works. It only creates more resistance in your life. Sometimes we have to take that step back in order to see where we need to grow and where we are operating out of alignment. And I feel like this was a theme in our conversation where it really was apparent that in order for her to grow her business on Instagram, she had to stop forcing what wasn't in alignment for her. And she did take that step back. She took that hiatus and then came back and everything started to fall into place. Number three, don't be afraid to be clear on your account and anywhere that you're showing up. When we don't have a clear message to people, it's only confusing for them. So if you're trying to create, and I don't want to use the word trying, I'm not going to edit this out because you hear me now. This is something I'm learning to not say the word trying. We're either doing or we're not doing, okay? So if you are creating a business online, you have to be crystal clear about what you're offering. You cannot confuse people. Of course, this is marketing advice, social media advice. Take it take it however you need it. But I actually think that it could go over into everyday life as well. You have to be clear. You have to be crystal clear and not afraid to speak your truth. Number three, Word of mouth marketing is number one. It's never going to go away. Make sure your people are happy. I loved this advice and that she shared this part of her story. Actually, she didn't give it as advice. She was kind of just telling her story. But for me, it was, yeah, yeah, I'm so in agreement with this. And I see it in my business time and time again. We want to have these high follower counts on our social media because We just really believe that that's where we're going to get sales from. And if we have all this, listen, followers, likes, that does not equal money. You have to be so good at what you're doing and so caring of people. It's the only way you're going to grow your business. Have you heard this saying? I think John Maxwell said it. People don't care what you know until they know how much you care. Care about your people because word of mouth is number one. Number four, I think, is where we are. Detach from the outcome. 
detach from the numbers. I I love this and I could go on a whole tangent about this, but we want these things and we get so fixated on, I got to reach 10,000 followers or I can't wait to make $10,000 or $100,000 a year, whatever it is. We get so hooked on that that we then lose ourselves in the process. You know, we're no longer enjoying the journey and If I could just give you one piece of advice, it would be this. Separate yourself from from the outcome. Detach from the outcome. Let go of that. Set it and forget it. We talked about this on the manifesting episode. And enjoy the process. Enjoy the entire process. The building phase, the learning phase, the marketing phase, whatever it is. Just really hop on and be in the moment. Detach from the outcome. All right, next, you have to just say yes. If it's something you really want, it will find its way to you. And she talked about this when she was needing to make a decision. And I will tell you, I say this all the time to people, and it's because somebody once said it to me. The first time I wanted to do a Reiki training, I didn't have the money to do it. And my Reiki master said, you say yes, and it will all align. And I did. And then all of a sudden the funds were there. And then guess what? Everything got canceled because it was 2020. And we all know what happened then. But the point remains, say yes, and the stars will align. It will all work out just as it should. I have another very similar example. Like this is the repeat story in my life when I have said yes to something. So I wanted to hire a coach through Tony Robbins coaching organization, and it was very expensive. And I, we didn't have that kind of money just lying around, but sure enough, I remembered that all I had to do was say yes and things would find its way to me and I'll be damned. If we didn't get a check for the exact amount that I needed for coaching and it changed my life, it's what allowed me to earn even more income to provide for my family. So if there's something that you are wanting to do, a class you want to take, a workshop, maybe you want to sign up for coaching, all you have to do is say yes, it will find its way to you. Okay. This next one, this is just kind of a question I want to ask. It's what she was talking about, but I want to ask you too. Everything you thought you wanted, was it really what you wanted or was it what you were told to want? Get clear on this. I think it's really important because I do find that a lot of people become super unhappy in their lives and they're not sure why. My question for you is, well, are you actually living a life that is fulfilling for you? Or did you follow the steps to to get where you are? And maybe it's a beautiful life, but is it truly what your soul wanted? Is it really in alignment with you? All right, next thing. I lost count. Here we go. Be willing to fail. I put this in the beginning for a reason because we want to show up. We want everything to be perfect. We want it to all look good. And I really did leave the imperfections in this episode for a reason You have to be willing to fail. You have to be willing to make, you have to be available for mistakes. Let yourself be available to make mistakes. Don't worry about how it's going to look. It's the only way you can grow. And then I love that she said this too. You're living something you once dreamed of. Be sure to remember that. Reflect on that. Wherever you are right now, I'm sure at some point in your life, you'd hoped for it. And if that's not true for you, that's okay. What do you need to do? to move towards that life that you're dreaming of. Last thing I'm going to point out, because I think it's really important, so important. Allow yourself to go through stuff. Feel your feelings. We got to stop avoiding. I could do an entire episode on this. I won't. I will actually keep it short here. But I do want you to lean in. If you run from your experiences, how are they ever going to teach you? All right, my friend, that is all for now. If you found this episode helpful, please share it with a friend. You never know who might need to hear it. And remember, as always, you are loved, you are valued, 
and you are appreciated. Bye now.